Welcome to this evening's meeting of the Westerville City Schools Board of Education. We're delighted to have all of you tonight. The agenda will be displayed in the front of the room on the screens. There will be two opportunities this evening to address the board. First being agenda item 6-1. The first set of public comments is relative to agenda items 7.1 through 11.4. Please state the agenda items you are referencing at the beginning of your comments. The second opportunity is agenda item 12.1. There is a sign-up sheet located on the table in the back of the room, and each speaker will have five minutes to address the board, and a timer will be shown on the screen. And with that, Ms. Marshall, will you please call the roll? Mr. Bell is absent. Mrs. Meyer? Here. Dr. Nesterbaker? Here. Mrs. Altman? Here. Mrs. Davidson? Here. Will you please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, up first tonight, we have district highlights and recognitions, and we do not have any. Um, which takes us to reports, and I will pass it over to Dr. Kellogg for our back-to-school report. Thank you, President Davidson, members of the board. I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to say we're back to school. Here we go. Um, we had a wonderful day today. We opened our day with our WE session. Um, all of our staff was back in, in a variety of professional development opportunities today. Uh, we opened this morning's session with our opening school video, which introduces people to uh, our thinking behind the portrait of a graduate and our efforts to talk about moving our portrait to practice and um, so that was a good starting point and great sessions today I sat in a, in a couple I would say um, in in casual conversation casual conversations with staff um, the general field today was relaxed and people enjoying themselves and getting back to their professional school lives in a way that feels like it's supposed to so um, I would say that the, the feeling today was really, really good, and so um, we're excited to have everybody back. Wanted to update you on a couple of um, the important pieces getting back. Um, one of it is um, information regarding our COVID protocols. Believe it or not, as we go into our third year, we're still talking about that little beast. Um, we have sent out communication to our families and staff regarding what to do if, um, that what to do if has to do with if you're not feeling well and or if you test positive. It's a rather pretty uh, simple set of tools at this point. Um, that's gone out and um, being communicated and we'll, we'll rely on that information as we move forward in terms of uh, providing people guidance what to do. No contact tracing, um, no uh, testing requirements, um, no dashboard, none of those things are going to be in play at this point this year. Uh, the, physical, the physical distancing and all those other pieces um, we'll set aside for now. Um, and just remind folks again that the, the number one mitigation strategy to reduce the probability and reduce the effects of is getting your shot and getting a booster. And so we just encourage people to consider that um, as we move forward. So um, unless there's any questions on where we are with COVID protocols, I'll move on to some other pieces. That's the best COVID conversation we've had in two years. Thank you. <laughs> so um, probably one of the big things on people's mind is facilities with all of the construction going on. As you know, we've been going at this for several years now, this kind of five-year journey, and, and every year we add more to the plate of projects we're doing, um, and we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm going to ask Mr. Dorn uh, to step forward and give you some updates, which um, can change by looking at his face every hour, um, but uh, we're getting there, um, and we will get there. So, Mr. Dorn, you want to give us a rundown where we are with our facilities? Well, we've got a lot of them. We've got a lot of them and we're working on all of them right now. So um, we were granted occupancy. Uh, we've got some major projects going on right now, and this morning we were granted occupancy at Hawthorne Elementary School. So we're in pretty good shape there. Um, we've had uh, occupancy at Anhurst. Uh, we had conditional occupancy at Westerville South, and what conditional means is there are still some items to be done, but they're not necessarily safety related. So it's safe to have school, but there are some things that the uh, city would like the contractor to accomplish relatively soon. So they grant us conditional, conditional occupancy in those cases. And we are um, the, the general contractor at Whittier uh, is meeting with the city tomorrow to discuss 
um, occupancy as well. So we are still waiting to hear back on Whittier. We do fully anticipate being in school on Thursday. Uh, that is still our goal and still what we believe will happen. Um, but our teachers are allowed to return to the building tomorrow, and that's a really good sign. So we got projects everywhere. Um, we were still fighting all the things that we were fighting at the beginning of the summer with supply chain issues and things like that. Um, we're very excited that we're going to have kids running around uh, and staff running around our buildings over the next several days. Scott, how about a little bit about the South Field, maybe a little bit on Longfellow, and even a little bit about the offices up here that might help with some Sure. Folks. So the South Turf, um, they're actually out there right now. I've been watching them on the camera system. Um, <laughs> they're doing a great job. They're working on the center field logo right now. So that's a four-phase process. The first phase is coming in and demolishing the old field. So they've, they've done that. Um, obviously, they did that a little bit earlier in the summer. The they were having trouble getting crews. That's a national issue for them. Uh, they got a crew on site on August 1st, and that crew essentially put the field down in three days. So they've done a nice job with that component. Uh, right now they are working on what uh, we we'll call the inlay. So they, um, the field comes with the five-yard five line markers, but that's it. And so everything else gets cut into the field and then glued down onto it. So all the numbers, the hash marks, and all those kinds of things. Um, the lettering in the end zones. So that's what they're working on right now. Uh, once that phase is complete, uh, then they will come in and they've got to then put down the sand and the rubber infill. So the sand is weather dependent. So we, we need a couple more <laughs> nice days here as we move towards closer to the start of the season. Uh, but we are pushing and pushing and we hope to have our first game on the field. So at the um, Longfellow uh, Elementary School, we have um, completed the project to allow the Best of Both Worlds program to move in. We have furniture delivery for that tomorrow, uh, but the, the classrooms are set up, the technology is in, the, the, um, the appliances, it's a life skills lab for some of our special needs students, our older special needs students, and uh, that's all ready to go. It looks great. We also have um, all of the workstations uh, for our staff that, we have a lot of staff in our district who work in multiple buildings and need a home uh, every now and then, uh, a place to call home. So uh, a lot of them have been assigned to Longfellow and those, um, those workstations are up and running, so they're ready to go there. Uh, over here at the ELC on the second floor where we have built some offices to create some private spaces for some uh, folks who have to have some very private conversations. Uh, that project is coming along rather well, but it is still and has always been a September 1st um, target date, so we're, we're looking at that right now. Uh, just go back into Westerville South, while we, we do have the academic areas, uh, the, the conditional occupancy for, we're probably looking at a September 7th, uh, right around that time for the media center to get turned back over to us. So we're, we're still waiting on the media center. They have been putting all of their efforts into getting kids in the classroom uh, for Thursday. And so uh, work has been, I don't want to say diverted or deferred, they just, that's where all their efforts are. So all those teams will then move back up on Thursday back to the media center and start working away there. Questions for Scott? I'm just glad to see you're still upright. <laughs> it's good. It's been a Herculean effort this summer and uh, you and everybody involved has just been working nonstop. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm really, really pleased to hear that we have the occupancies that we do. I'm more than pleased I, you know, a week or so ago, I wasn't sure that was even feasible. So that's really says a whole lot about the teams that are working. The last two weeks have been a whirlwind uh, and, you know, we would really like to publicly recognize the contractors for keeping their teams on site and working hard and working through the weekend. And, um, you know, I was at Hawthorne yesterday and there were probably 12 vehicles there, people working on site, and that's, you know, those are the kind of um, partners you'd like to have in projects yeah. like this. Yeah, I was, um, it's, it's really incredible, and, you know, I know that this whole community, right, is contributing to make this happen. 
And so I guess that's one of the things on my mind, and I, I don't expect there's a plan right now because we're just trying to get this done. But for some of these spaces, it would be really great, you know, when they're sort of wrapped up to allow community members to see them outside of the school day, if that's at all possible. So I would love to do that. Sure. And, you know, just um, one to recognize right now the tremendous changes at Anhurst Elementary School. And uh, with their 50th anniversary coming up, uh, they have a, a, an event mid-September. Uh, great opportunity. So, um, in fact, I ran into a gentleman today at Westerville South who was wandering around looking for the, um, the, the Hall of Fame, the Athletic Hall of Fame, which because he had two children who are, are in it, and he wanted to go back and take a look at that. And, and that was part of the renovation for the cafeteria. So. Uh, and you know, so we talked a little bit about how those have been converted to digital images, and they'll be up in the new uh, athletic wing. But he then told me that his children went to Anhurst, and so then we started talking about the changes at Anhurst. And so there's there's going to be a lot of opportunities for our community to to see a lot of these places. We'll have a later in the fall. I'm sure we'll have our tr traditional capital update presentation where we'll show you some pictures uh, for for people who want to tune in. But I would definitely, if you have the opportunity, recommend visiting some of these sites because just the small part of what we did at Hawthorne, the transformation of the building is, is tremendous. And, um, you know, it's like that in all these projects. I just want to say thank you. I want to echo my colleagues. But um, the school buildings no longer look like the school buildings that I grew up in. They're really exciting, very colorful, and just really thoughtfully put together. So I want to say thanks. Um, I did have a question about Westerville South's lockers. Mm -hmm. And just, I'm not sure, I got something about it. I don't know if everybody knows, but like, are they going to be able to be used? So the, the, when you take, so phase five, which mm -hmm. is currently um, our next phase of five of six phases, right? Um, when that wing gets closed down, we lose a significant number of lockers because we aren't going to have people in those spaces. Um, so at some point, until the whole renovation's done, they won't have enough lockers for every student. So can a student get a locker if they need a locker? Yes. Will they generally just give everybody, you know, back when we went to pick up our, you know, our schedules and books and things like that, you just got your locker. Uh, they're not doing that right now, but if you need a locker, you certainly can get a locker. Thank you. They do really look great, and I would encourage the community to go see those buildings. So I echo everything my colleagues have said, and I just want to throw in an extra thing. Thank you to the community for giving us the funds and letting this happen. Um, it wouldn't happen without a, such a supportive community. And I would love to see the kids' faces as they enter these new yeah. spaces. Like, that would be really cool. I know Charlie is thin, but, you know, just the awe. It's amazing. So thank you to you and your team and all the construction workers and very grateful. Absolutely. So to that, you know, Thursday morning, feel free. Yeah. Be at any schools. We assign all the district administrators to the buildings the first two days to help out. And it is, uh, I know we'll personally probably plan myself. I'm not sure where yet, but at one of the places where I want to see those little youngsters' faces when they come in and see it, because it is. The Hawthorne piece is, um, just kind of blew me away. I mean where that building was and just to get a glimpse of what they're doing to it is just fantastic so yeah i encourage if you're board members you're more than welcome to, to be there um maybe you want to for wait for the second shift elementary which is at like 9 20 <laughs> as opposed to the high school which is a crack of dawn um with that i know um i saw randy here and i know uh, scott's still here too i want to talk about uh, transportation a little bit because that was a big issue for us last year and we made some changes um, in an effort to try and address that, including the start end times, which um, as we change those start end times for some of our elementary schools, and uh, we made some adjustments at the uh, magnet school level as well. And those changes were all intended to free up our some of our buses to give us more free resources to cover routes when we need to. Um, and the staffing of our transportation department is uh, not a static thing. You don't start the year fully staffed and then the year fully staffed. There's ebb and flow all year long with our drivers and our substitute drivers and I know we continue to work on that the board was very helpful in providing us some opportunity to provide incentives I know Randy and his team and Scott and HR have all been working on this um, 
I, I, I don't know if there's any updates to transportation beyond that that you want to share or if board members have any questions about transportation going in. We have reminded our principals, unfortunately, keep those uh, early release schedules in your back pocket that we used last year in case we run into that. It's still a possibility. Uh, I would think that um, the impact of COVID on people being out for extended periods for isolation and quarantine, um, th that um, diminishing and, and essentially going away uh, to a large extent should impact as well, should be helpful to us. Um, but I don't know if there's anything else to that you might want to add or questions from the board for Randy, who didn't know I was going to bring this up tonight, or for Scott. <laughs> I think you hit a, a lot of the highlights, but I, you know, we always open the year with, you know, we'd love to open with all routes covered, right? But we're all, we are opening the year. Now, we're thankful we have people like Shirley Timberlake, who's in the audience tonight, who's one of our trainers who just completed a couple more, right? Yep. So we're hoping to only be uh, opening with three open routes this year. Um, so uh, yeah, this camera's over here, right? Because I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, please, if you know somebody who wants to be a driver, send them our way. We could use a few more. WCSOH.org slash drive. <laughs> and are parents finding out their routes differently this year? I feel like I read maybe it's not mailed out, it's on Power School. Is Correct. it this year? Or no? Okay, so Correct. it is this year. Yeah, uh, schedules for student transportation was available as of last Wednesday in Power School. Okay. Thank you. It only shows up online, right? Not in the app. I'm going to defer to someone with a little more knowledge on the app side of that. Um, <laughs> I know that it shows up. That is correct. Okay. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> That's what happens when we tell you, don't tell you to prep for the meeting. We just bring in. Um, thank you to all the folks in transportation, drivers, all the folks over there make that run. I know that was a pretty big lift to change the way we did the scheduling and done a fantastic job and so um, we're hopeful that that is less impactful in our school community this year moving forward um, I also asked Carrie to be here because um, staffing and I'm sure everybody is thinking about this because if you read in these national reports as these school districts are out there trying to hire thousands of people well the good news is most of them came here and that's why everybody else is a shortage but Carrie you want to give us a little update on where we are staffing yeah absolutely um, having had the opportunity to work with Scott Reeves over the last year and now with Mark Cooper um, I can say that it's been a wonderful and exciting opportunity to be a part of the hiring season as we prep for the school year and watching as our positions fill. We continue to struggle in some of our key areas like our drivers and some of our part-time areas like food service and our cafeteria recess aides. There's lots of opportunities, so come on and apply. Won't miss that opportunity either. Um, but to have been a part of our new teacher orientation with one of our largest groups that we have had with just shy of 90 new teachers and the exciting energy that was in that room. And then our um, driver in-service day on Friday, we had We Day today for classified and licensed staff, and it's like just that energy is good. So while we still have some vacancies and things that need to be filled, we're doing really good. We're in a good place. We continue to see some challenges, but we are working every day to find ways to get better and continue to improve that process. Great, thank you so much. Yeah. Carrie mentioned new teacher orientation last week. That was an exciting event with all those very young people coming in the door. And one of my favorite parts is when Scott Reeves was opening the session, he was describing how much he enjoyed his, in his former role, temporary role as executive director of HR, the opportunity to call people and offer them jobs and hear these young people on the other side of the phone, oh, why is an offer this real? <laughs> and then saying, and I could even hear some of your moms in the background going, yes. <laughs> Um, they were a great, lively bunch. We, they, uh, the short example, we were uh, breaking, they changed the way they did new teacher orientation this year, made it very engaging with activities. Um, we actually did some instructional activities with them. And one of the sessions, they broke them out into two different rooms, and the room with the elementary didn't have enough chairs. And they just all went back in the media center, picked up chairs, and bought them in the room like that's what they're supposed to do. And so we're excited about these, these folks coming into the district. A lot of great, great talent um, we've seen. I've talked to a number of them. Um, none of them shared um, why they're attracted to Westerville and the work that we're doing and the community that, that is here and the supports that are here and they recognized all of the riches we have here and that's what drove them here. And um, so kudos to Scott and his year there and to Carrie and all the folks in HR who've brought in such a great crop of people and everybody's gotten them ready to go and 
Um, we wore them out today and sent them home tired, and they'll come back tomorrow and get their room set up. Some of them cleaning drywall dust off of their tabletops, but it'll be all good. So um, we, are, we are ready for them when they come on Thursday morning. So if there's anything else you'd like to know, be happy to answer any questions or fill in the blanks. No, we're just so grateful. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Okay, 5.1, approve the, um, sorry, approve the minutes of the regular meeting held on Friday, July 8th, 2022, as presented. May I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Any comments here? Hearing none. Dr. Ness Breaker? Yes. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. 6.1, public comments, we do not have any. Uh, 7.1, resolution to approve the purchases in accordance with ORC 5705.41 and board policy 6320. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Ms. Marshall, do you want to talk to us about this? Um, yes, thank you, President Davidson, members of the board. So um, bear with me. There's a list here. Mm -hmm. So this is pretty common with the start of the school year as we're closing with the old fiscal year and opening the new fiscal year. We do have purchase orders that we can't roll over just for various reasons. Um, so looking at the talking points, this was part of an ESSER. We did have a purchase order open. It was part of the ESSER funds that needed to be closed, and so we had to reopen a new one. Uh, the Nutrislice agreement was um, just based on the contract date, some confusion with the contract start date and the actual invoice date. Our Franklin County uh, Board of Developmental Disabilities, um, we have, that's through our special education department, there were purchase orders open that ended up being closed with the fiscal year. And then preschool, this is a new expense for them that was a little surprising for them. They're working on getting that into their budget for the future. And then Zonar Systems, uh, transportation had a purchase order open for this, but it was under encumbered, so we had to do an additional PO to open it for the total amount. Okay. Uh, Rocket Alumni Solutions, that was just a matter of timing and confusion with the start date. And then the T-Mobile was also um, a purchase order that had been closed that wasn't able to be reopened until after July 1st. So. Any questions? Hearing none. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Dr. Nesterbreaker? Yes. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Is it okay if I take the personnel consent agenda as one for everyone? Okay. May I have a motion for 8.1 through 8.13 for the personnel consent agenda? So moved. Second. And Carrie Dennis is joining us. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you, President Davidson, members of the board, Dr. Kellogg and Ms. Marshall. I'd like to present to you for your consideration uh, tonight's personnel consent agenda. The items on today's agenda mostly represent our regular action items with regards to resignations, hiring, change of assignments, and contract status changes. There are a few items, however, to be noted on the agenda tonight. The board will see the consent agenda is a little longer. Um, than it had been in the past meetings. This reflects the busy work of hiring um, for the start of the school year. Uh, this evening, we are asking the board to consider and approve the following. Uh, the termination of an employment, of the employment of a licensed individual whose license was not renewed and therefore we cannot um, be employed in their current role as a home instruction tutor. Uh, we have our usual array of resignations and change of assignments within all of our staff as we prepare for the school year. Two administrative resignations. We'd like to wish outgoing uh, Assistant Manager of Transportation, Carletta Swackhammer, good luck uh, in her new role as the transport Transportation Supervisor in Gahanna Schools, um, as well as outgoing Director of Elementary Curriculum and Instruction, Megan Rose Foreman, um, in her new role as the Assistant Superintendent of Big Walnut Schools. We welcome to our district 16 classified and 14 licensed employees. Um, and on the agenda for your approval tonight is two new administrators. Ms. Kate Toma um, is recommended for the Director of Elementary Curriculum and Instruction. Ms. Toma comes to us from Big Walnut Schools where she last served as the Director of Academic Achievement, um, as well as Chris Doolittle. 
who will serve as the interim coordinator of gifted services to fill the vacancy created by uh, Kaylee Baker's acceptance of the uh, principal of Hanby. Um, Chris has had a long and wonderful career uh, with our district and has agreed to bridge this gap for the year while we look for a permanent replacement. Lastly, we have two retirements for the board to consider this evening. Kathleen Homan is retiring her position as a first grade teacher at Robert Frost Elementary School after 14 years of service with the district. And Deborah McRoberts is retiring as a reading teacher at Faust Elementary with 14 years of service to the district. These retirements reflect a total of 28 years of service with Westerville City Schools. And we wish both Kathleen and Deborah a very long, happy retirement. I will spare you the history lesson. We did contemplate maybe the song 28 years ago that was number one. It really wasn't that exciting. Um, <laughs> nor will I dance as some has asked, but um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Aww. Any questions? No. Hearing none. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. Um, we do not have any old business this evening, but we do have some new business. 10.1, first reading, policy 5111.01, homeless students. Um, and I think Ms. Marshall's gonna speak with us about this. Yes, I am. Thank you, President Davidson, members of the board. So uh, this is a very simple um, addition to our homeless students policy. So this policy governs how we um, support our homeless students and the requirements that we have through McKinney Vento. So that's a federal law that requires that we remove barriers that ho our homeless students face as part of their educational process, which includes extracurricular activities, summer school, things like that. Uh, we, had no, we had no process for waiving extracurricular fees for these students, and so this change in the policy will allow us to do that. Any questions about that? Just thank you for finding this and pointing the, this out and correcting it. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, moving on uh, to recommended action 11.1 .1, donations. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any comments or questions here from anyone? Always a thanks. Yeah, thank you. Ms. Marshall? Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. 11.2, impracticality to transport resolution. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. And Randy Schneider's with us. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, President Davidson, members of the boards, Dr. Kellogg, Ms. Marshall. Before you this evening is a resolution declaring impracticality to transport an identified group of students. A little background, Ohio law allows for public schools to determine impracticality of transportation after consideration of a number of factors, such as the cost of providing transportation and the number of students transported. On May 23rd, 2022, the board passed a resolution declaring one student impractical for transportation and before you this evening is a list containing 66 additional students that have been deemed impractical to transport. Um, our Office of Transportation and Purchasing and Logistics ha has evaluated the listed private school students per the requirements of section 332702 of the Ohio Revised Code and decl has declared the listed students impractical to transport. Um, approving this resolution would allow the district to offer payment in lieu of transportation in the manner provided per the Ohio Revised Code and the payment in lieu amount is determined by the state. Therefore, it is recommended that the Board of Education approve declaring the listed students impractical for transportation and offering them payment in lieu. I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Any questions? Yeah, Randy, just um, just in general, not in any specific case, but just so people understand impracticality transport, what are some of the things that we look at? Certainly, we look at the amount of time that it would take to transport those students. Um, there's a requirement that the student needs to attend a home school that is within 30 minutes of the school that they attend, the non-public charter community school. Um, another factor that we looked at or look at each time is like for like service. If we've already declared a particular non-public or charter school impractical and a similar picture, if you will, or a similar um, scope 
appears with another group of students to another building. We do like for like there, um, as well as the total cost for providing such service to that number of students. Great, thank you. Just mm -hmm. wanted to give people a sense of what goes into making those decisions. Certainly, for families. thank you. Thanks. That's good. Any other questions? Hearing none. Dr. Nestebreaker? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. 11.3, fiscal year 23, transportation routes. May I have a motion? So oh. moved. Second. Andy's still with us. All right, thank you. And the second resolution before you this evening regarding transportation is the approving, approving of the designated bus routes and van routes um, and stop locations for the upcoming 2022-2023 school year. Again, Ohio Administrative Code this time requires annual district board approval of all bus stops and time schedules, and this requirement must be accomplished within the first 10 days of the start of school or even before the school year, but must be finished and um, completed by 10 days within the school year. The state of Ohio requires transportation for students in kindergarten through grade eight who reside greater than two miles from their home school. And I'm proud and pleased to say that Westerville continues um, to exceed the state minimum requirements. As Westerville City Schools provides transportation for students in grades kindergarten through 10th grade and also 11th and 12th grade students based on space available. Westerville City Schools provides our van service through our MyVan program for students with special education transportation requirements for grades K through 12. Last year for the 2021-2022 school year, we ended the school year with 101 school bus routes to 34 locations, 24 public schools, seven private schools, one charter school, and three career centers. And for the beginning of the 2022-2023 school year, we're gonna start right back where we ended. And I have to note that some of our drivers are very excited to transport to Minerva, France for their first day of school. <laughs> there are currently, as of last count, 10,716 students assigned to transportation and the number continues to grow. I like to use the term, that's two bus rides per day for those students, that's potentially 20,000 bus rides a day. Students' transportation schedules, as I mentioned earlier, were made available in Power School on Wednesday, August 3rd. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have further. Just a quick one. Um, thank you for that. You guys, it's such a lift every year, and I know it was extra this year. Um, so thank you to thank everybody you. on the team. Um, so just a question about the 11th and 12th graders, right, on a space available basis. Um, we doing okay on that space available basis for 11th and 12th graders this year? Yes. Great. We are. I'm pleased to say that um, the request comes and we make it, we make it happen. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have a question. I just want to say thanks also. Um, what you do is uh, far beyond the knowledge of what many people are aware of. And I wish there was some way I could broadcast or put up a wonderful billboard that says you know, 20,000 bus rides a day and however many thousands upon thousands upon thousands of miles are driven every day. And all of the extra work that you and your team go to every day to make sure that all the special situations get taken care of. Uh, it's, um, it's a massive uh, effort, and I want you to know we just truly appreciate it. Truly Thank appreciate you. you and the whole team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yep. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Dr. Nestebreaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. 11.4, resolution to approve employee dishonesty and faithful performance of duty policy in lieu of a bond. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. And Ms. Marshall's gonna talk to us about this one. Yes, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so that's a fancy name for liability insurance, uh, for a portion <laughs> of our liabi <laughs> liability insurance policy, just so everyone knows. So in uh, March of 2019, our Ohio legislature changed the law that allowed treasurers and other bonded employees to be covered under a district's liability insurance in lieu of holding a bond. And so this is meant to give districts better protection in case if something were to happen. I can tell you I have no intentions of being dishonest or anything <laughs> like that. Um, so we've updated our board policy in 2019 to match Ohio Revised Code. My employment contract was also updated to reflect this change. And so this is just the final piece we need to get that change in place. 
Great, thank you. Any comments, questions here? Dr. Nestor Baker? Yes. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. We do not have any public comments this evening, which that takes us to <clears throat> board comments. And who would like to go first? I can go. <clears throat> now that I'm choking on water. <clears throat> so I just want to welcome everybody back. I can't believe that we're starting school. The summer's already gone, but welcome back to all the students and the teachers and the staff. And thank you, everyone, for working so hard to get us to where we are. I know that it's a huge lift. Um, so I just wanted to uh, extend a quick thank you to Scott and Carrie. Um, I know my head was spinning um, with all of the hirings and the people moving around. And, and I know we've already said this, but wow, that was a lot. Thank you. Um, thank you for working so hard to fill those vacancies. I know we have a few left, but we'll get there. Um, not much to add on legislative update. Um, the great thing about summer is the General Assembly goes home. Um, <laughs> um, however, I'm not sure I mentioned a bill that was introduced right before we broke for summer, so I just wanted to put it on our radar. It's House Bill 619. It was introduced by Representatives Willis Blackshear, Jr., a Democrat from Dayton, and Jessica Miranda, a Democrat from Forest Park. And it would allow students to take up to three mental health days without it counting towards absence hours. That triggers mandatory um, parental notice. The school can make the decision to allow the student to take that day at home or provide an in-school mental health day in lieu of regular classes. The school may also refer that, um, a student to outside professional support. On May 17th, it was referred to primary and secondary education, but no movement since then. So that is all for me, and uh, welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. And just a reminder that not all students actually start on Thursday, okay. right? Which is a little point of contention in my house <laughs> with a couple of my kids. But in any case, please make sure that you know your kid starts on Thursday or they might start Friday or whatever. Kindergarten, Kindergarten yep, general start. So please take a look at that. And um, just, I had the real privilege of stopping in on the new employee orientation. Just such a delight to see all the new educators in our district and welcome and um, let's have a great year. Thanks. I have nothing profound to say at all. Just, I'm not sure I ever do, but uh, I also want to say thank you. There is not a department, there is not a person in this school district that hasn't just been working flat out uh, to make this, this year's opening of school, whether it's Thursday or Friday or after general start, whenever that happens, to make it as successful as we can possibly make it. Um, I, we say it all the time, I say it all the time. We are incredibly blessed in this district to have remarkable people, remarkable adults who are working with remarkable kids to uh, make the education system that we have uh, the best it can be, to make it as compassionate, as rigorous, as strong, as healthy, as focused for the community and the staff and the families as the students as it needs to be to be the public education system that we all know, love, and expect. So thank you for meeting all of those expectations over and over and over again. Um, I just want to wish everyone a happy start to this school year, and I hope everyone comes back inspired and learns a lot and feels seen, valued, and heard. So that's it for me. 14.1, um, the board will meet in regular session on Monday, August 22nd, and a special session on Monday, August 29th here at 6 p.m. at the Early Learning Center. And with that, 15.1, uh, we have an executive session for the purpose of discussing employment and compensation of a school employee, and may have a motion. So moved. Second. And we're going to sneak into executive session, but we'll come back on camera and adjourn. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Dr. Nestbaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes.
We are back from executive session, but we are going to adjourn this meeting. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. Mrs. Meyer? Yes. Mrs. Altman? Yes. Dr. Nesterbaker? Yes. Mrs. Davidson? Yes. And with that, we're adjourned.